Table of Law notes that it becomes all too easy to oppress people when they are stripped of the ability to disclose themselves towards the future. The tyrant, if he manages to cut them off from disclosing, reduces them to base animality. In time, they come to resemble cattle, and it troubles us less if they have to be sacrificed for the collective cause. They become indistinguishable numbers that exceed our capacity for care. Debovat takes this moment to demonstrate how Hegelian and Marxist thinking gets co-opted by tyrants in the oppression of the individual for the collective cause. In those thinkers' systems, the individual is only a momentary iteration of the unfolding consciousness. It is nothing to give one's life up for the sake of a just end. De Beauvoir has problems with this view aside from the fact that it is a rhetorical gift to totalitarian madmen. First, if we truly embrace this perspective, the hope for end will never be met. Just generation after generation will be sacrificed for it. The telos of history is a lie. Second, if one denies the ultimate value of the individual for the sanctity of the state, you've got a big problem on your hands. If the individual doesn't matter, why does a larger aggregate of individuals matter? It doesn't. A million zeros do not add up to one, or whatever the expression is. So here we see again De Beauvoir's anti-Marxism in the reiteration of the point that the only way our lives can have meaning is if the individual gives value and meaning to his own life. Lingering here is still the question of how De Beauvoir justifies us caring about the freedom of future generations. If the Marxist and the Hegelian narrative of history is illegitimate, then what recourse does she have? Perhaps the issue becomes moot if we are willing our own freedom and the freedom of our contemporaries. Maybe we don't have to consciously think too hard about what conditions will be like 300 years from now. 